Is it possible to enhance the communication in your relationship through conflict? If you want to find out, keep watching. I'm going to talk about that right now. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Danielle and today I'm wrapping up my three-part series on communication. I'm going to be talking about how you can strengthen the communication in your relationships through conflict. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for coming back. Please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I'm really trying to build my followers there. If you're new here, then welcome. Thank you for joining me. Please hit that subscribe button if you like videos that encourage, motivate, and inspire you to be the best version of yourself you can be physically, emotionally, and mentally. You're going to love it here. I do put out videos on Mondays, but sometimes more often, so if you ring the bell, you'll be sure never to miss a video. Before we can talk about how we can use conflict in our relationships to strengthen and improve the communication in those relationships, we really need to talk about what we're going to do to strategize before conflict arises. That's really important so that we can be prepared. When my kids were little, I talked to them all about what to do if they were confronted by a stranger, what to do if a stranger tried to get them into a car or give them candy. I talked to them about what to do if they were confronted with drugs or alcohol or other things that I didn't want them doing. And this is the same thing. The reason I talked to my kids about those situations well before they ever happened was so that they could be prepared, so that they could have a response ready, so that they could know what they were gonna do. We practiced scenarios so that they could practice and feel comfortable about what to do if they were confronted with any of those scenarios. And you need to practice and be prepared and strategize for what you're gonna do and how you're gonna handle conflict before it arises. So one of the first things I think that you really need to do when you're looking at this is understand the physical responses that your body tells you as you start to feel like you might be confronted with conflict. We all know when that's happening, when voices start to get raised, when discussion starts to get heated, our body gives us physical responses before our emotional or mental responses kick in. And for everybody it's different. Does your pulse start to raise? Does your heart palpitate? Does your mouth go dry? Do you get a headache? What are the physical symptoms for you that you are being put in a situation where you might be confronted with conflict? When we understand those physical symptoms and we can address those, then we can start to handle conflict better and start to be prepared emotionally and mentally for that as well. When we feel like our muscles are tensing or our heart is racing, we can incorporate some deep breathing, we can slow down, we can unclench our fists, we can lean forward and have intentional open body posture. We can decide that we're not gonna raise our voice, we can speak in a slow and steady tone. We can make some decisions in advance about how we're gonna behave. Another part of this that's really important is setting boundaries in communication when dealing with conflict. This is really key so that you can maintain your self-respect, you can maintain control, and you're not put in an emotionally or even physically abusive situation. Another thing that's really key is that you need to decide in advance what your boundaries are in dealing with conflict and communication. And when I say that, what I'm talking about is determining what you will tolerate when you're handling conflict with someone in communication and what's not okay. So for example, you might be able to tolerate raised voices. You might be able to tolerate differing opinions. You might be able to tolerate negative body language, but maybe you don't wanna to tolerate screaming, swearing, name calling, anything that would put you in physical danger, any sort of physicality or any sort of damage to your property. Those things are not okay. So you need to determine in advance what your boundaries will be. And I really wanna encourage you to sit down with people that you communicate with on a daily or weekly basis, whether it be coworkers, bosses at work, family members, whoever it is, and kind of determine those boundaries together if you can and talk about strategies to better the communication you're gonna have in conflict because it will prepare you for success, it will prepare you for those times when you will have conflict in the future. The other thing that we need to really look at is we need to understand what's going on below the surface. We need to understand what's behind the conflict that's happening. What is the purpose or the real reason why someone is combative or why they're behaving the way they are? When we can really look at that on a deeper level and try and understand what's really going on, it can give us some empathy and more understanding of who they are as a person and where they're coming from and maybe help us see their point of view. If we are really wanting to use the conflict in our relationships to improve and strengthen those relationships, 
then we really need to look at what's really going on behind the surface of the potential conflict. What's really happening and what other factors are there that might be making the conflict arise? A lot of times we will find that the potential conflict that we might be dealing with has nothing to do with us. Let me give you this example. Say a man goes into work one day and his boss calls him into the office to tell him that they're firing him. He's being let go because they're downsizing and he's also losing his company car. Now this would be stressful to anyone, but it's particularly stressful to this man because his wife just had her fourth baby and he knows that he's the sole income provider in their home and he doesn't know how he's gonna tell his wife all day. He's so worried and stressed out and he's trying to think about how he's gonna break the news to his wife and what he's gonna do. That evening when he gets home, the very first thing he's greeted with is his wife telling him that something's broken in the garage, she can't get the garage door open, she doesn't know what to do, can he go out and look at it? And he has a very reactionary response because his wife has no idea what happened to him that day and his initial immediate response is to scream at her and walk out the door, slamming the door behind him without a word. His wife cannot believe what just happened. How dare he have the audacity to treat her this way when all she was asking for was a little bit of help. Isn't that his job? She is so upset she storms upstairs and as she's walking down the hall past her son's room, she sees that he hasn't put his laundry away that she asked him to put away a week ago. So in turn, she screams at her son that he's grounded, takes away his electronics, and continues to storm down the hall. Well, her son is really mad. What is her problem anyway? Why is she blowing this out of proportion and getting so mad? He storms out of his bedroom, stubs his toe on his bed frame. As he's walking down the hall, the cat's in his way, so he kicks the cat. Well, that poor cat didn't do anything wrong, but here we really see what can happen in a reactionary chain when nobody takes a moment to step back and really figure out what was actually going on in that conflict and what was causing the conflict to begin with. If the wife would have just paused when her husband responded that way and asked, did you have something happen today? What's the matter? What happened today to make you so upset? and just encourage him to talk about it, maybe the outcome would have been different, but we have to understand that a lot of times when we're confronted with conflict in relationships, it really doesn't have anything to do with us. And when we understand that, and when we can look at it a little bit differently and kind of take a step back and take a breath, we're able to approach it in a way that can make the other person more open and more receptive to really telling us what the real problem is and how they're truly feeling, which can actually foster a deeper relationship and foster better communication in that relationship. Let me give you another example of the ways that conflict can start to happen in relationships or in situations that we encounter because we don't really know what's actually going on. Say that there's a man that gets on a city bus and he's accompanied by his four kids he sits down very quietly, doesn't look up, doesn't say a word, but all the meanwhile his kids start running around, they're being really noisy, they're making a lot of trouble on the bus, people are getting upset, and finally one man says to him, sir, you really need to control your kids, they're out of control, they're bothering everybody on the bus. Finally the man looks up and says very softly, I'm really sorry, my wife just died, my kids just lost their mom, we're coming from her funeral, and they really don't know how to control their emotions. They're really upset right now. And frankly, I just don't have the strength to deal with it right now. That's another example that really shows us that some things may be going on behind the scenes or under the surface that we have no idea about. And if we just take a moment to pause and maybe look at the situation in a little bit different light, sometimes a smile or a kind word can really go a long way in diffusing conflict in our relationships and can really strengthen the communication that we're going to have because the other person realizes that we are really interested in actually connecting and not just being right or having our point be made. So once we look at conflict this way and we start to put these strategies in place, we can get excited about the conflict in our relationships because we know that's an opportunity to deepen and strengthen those relationships. And we can start to use some of these strategies to really help us build healthier and stronger relationships along the way as we deal with the conflict in our relationships. So now I wanna give you some suggestions and tips on how you can deal with conflict in your relationships when it arises so that you can strengthen that communication you have and improve it. The first thing is that you wanna breathe deeply. A lot of times when we are stressed out, upset, when we are confronted with conflict, we tend to start to breathe shallowly, our heart starts to beat faster, we wanna slow that down. We wanna to start to breathe deeply, 
We want to lean back. We want to take a step back and just kind of collect ourselves emotionally, mentally, and physically. The next thing is that we want to purposely look at the person. We want to try to have an open posture where we're leaning forward, where, where our posture is inviting. We want to hear what they have to say. Be willing to listen, but remind the person that you want to listen in a non-confrontational way. You want to listen, but you also want to make it clear that you are setting your boundaries in communication. You are open to hearing them, but you don't want to be screamed at or sworn at or be called names. You just want to listen to what they have to say, ask them to repeat themselves calmly, try to be open with your posture, don't interrupt them, and remember that you don't want to take it personally. Now this is easier said than done because it might feel like a personal attack and might feel like it's very personal but you really just wanna listen. When you're in the heat of the moment and you're in the middle of a conflict with someone, you wanna attack the problem, not the person. It's really important. A lot of times I have to remember to let my kids know that I love them, but I hate their behavior. It's not them that I hate, it's not them that I'm mad at, it's the behavior that they're exhibiting because there's a difference. So it's really important that when you are having a conflict, when there's a situation that arises that you don't agree with, to attack the situation, attack the problem, do not attack the person. And that's really key because when you're involved in a conflict, especially if it's with someone that you spend a lot of time with or that you care about, you want to think about the big picture. You want to think about the end game. You don't want to think about that particular discussion or argument or something like that because that's only one situation in the grand scheme of your whole life with this person. You want to think about what it is that you really want to build in this relationship for the long term. And then it becomes not so important that you win an argument or not so important that the other person sees your point of view, but it's important that during conflict, you're not damaging that relationship emotionally or mentally to an irreparable point. And you know what I mean? Sometimes we've said things to people that we can't take back, but the damage remains even years later. So it's really important when you're involved in a conflict in a relationship that you really consider that and you think about that and you remain calm and you remain courteous and respectful in your dealings when conflict arises. Now I know this is a lot easier said than done. A lot of times when we're in that moment where we're heated and we feel that conflict and we're just in the heat of things, it's a lot harder to do that. But that's why I told you to prepare in advance. The other thing I'm gonna tell you is that you want to validate what the other person has said. Now, as I said in my first video on communication, and I'll link that above if you haven't seen it, that was how to communicate more effectively. Validation doesn't mean that you agree with their opinion or what it is they want. That doesn't mean that you're saying, yes, you can have X, Y, Z, or I agree with you. That just means that you are letting them know that you are hearing them, that you are, that you are aware of what they want, that you are listening. And that's really key in strengthening communication and really using conflict to do that. The next thing I'm gonna tell you to do might surprise you and your initial response might be thinking, no way, I'm not gonna do that, absolutely not. But I will tell you, I really do think that this would really strengthen the communication through the conflict that you're having and that is simply to ask for permission to talk. Now when I say that, what I mean is that you're gonna listen to the other person completely finish their thought just a simple act of being humble and asking for that permission really can show the other person that you are concerned that they were able to share everything they wanted to say about their point of view and it can diffuse their feelings of maybe anger or frustration. It can show them that you are really a humble person and you are really interested in hearing them and it can actually start to change the entire tone of the conversation. And then you're gonna say something like, I wanna make sure that you've gotten a chance to say everything you wanna say. There's some things that I wanna say to this or have a response. Is it okay for me to share that with you now? Is it okay if I say something now? I'd like to share something with you. Is that okay with you? Another point I wanna make about this is that after you've talked things through, if you can't come to a mutually beneficial agreement, maybe you wanna ask for a compromise. Is there a way that you could meet in the middle? Is there something you could do that would satisfy both parties? Is there some give and take? And you know, a lot of times with my kids, I think about this when there's conflict in our relationships because maybe they haven't cleaned their room the way I want them to. Maybe they're not tucking in their shirt and I think they look sloppy. You know, you really need to pick your battles. I have to do that a lot of times with my kids and I have to decide 
am I getting really upset over something that in the grand scheme of things, in the really big picture, it doesn't matter all that much. Sometimes it's really important to let someone win an argument or a battle or a conflict that they really feel is important to them. If that would really give them some emotional gain or give them something that they really want that in the grand scheme of life isn't a real big deal it's important to let them have that and it's important for them to recognize that you did that so that next time when you want something that they don't agree with and they don't think is important that they can listen to you and do the same thing for you and so coming to a compromise if you can is something that you want to work towards but as long as through this process you've stayed calm you've stayed open you've really listened and validated what it is they're saying they're going to be more open to maybe arriving at a compromise in your discussions to personalize it too much and i know this is a lot easier said than done remember that this isn't about you remember that this isn't a personal attack on you you could have some very differing viewpoints you could just not agree and the last thing I want to say about this is sometimes what you really have to do if you're really at odds and you're really in the middle of a conflict is have the wisdom and discernment to say we need to take a break we need to stop talking about this maybe you need some physical separation maybe one of you needs to go in the bedroom and one needs to stay in the living room maybe one of you needs to leave the house that's okay that's totally fine you can set a time to come back and talk about it sometimes in the past too what I've done is I've actually written down the points that I want to say because sometimes I feel like it's easier for me to write those down I have time to think it through I can write it down on paper let the other person read it and then we can come together in a meeting that we decide upon and talk about the points we've written down we've each had the time to really think through clearly what it is we want to say so that the conflict can be resolved in a more effective and efficient way. So taking that break, taking that time apart and recognizing that you're really not getting anywhere because maybe you're just too heated, maybe you're just too passionate or the conflict is already a little bit too full blown. So you need to kind of step back and take a break and talk about it at a different time. As I said, you really wanna consider your long-term goal. You really wanna consider the long-term effects of really saying something that you regret or really saying something negative that will have long-term implications on your relationship negatively where in turn if you are able to keep your cool if you are able to respond with kindness and with respect you will be heard and you will also strengthen the communication in that relationship I hope you found the information in this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below the ways that you're going to navigate your conflict to strengthen the communication in your relationship and make it better. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, don't forget to make your everyday ordinary life extraordinary. If you can't come to an agreement that's mutually agreeable or beneficial, if you can't come to an agreement that's mutually agreeable or beneficial, I cannot say the word beneficial. <laughs>